Good morning and welcome to another edition of Sunday at Home. I hope and pray that uh, you're continuing to walk with the Lord and uh, to know his presence in your life during this time. Well, today is Pentecost Sunday when we celebrate the birth of the church, uh, the coming of the Holy Spirit, which of course was 50 days after the resurrection. So let me read to you the uh, wonderful account from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And then a few verses later, Peter gets up and addresses the crowd to uh, explain to them from the scriptures what's going on. And he quotes from the prophet Joel. Let me read this to you. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Well, we certainly live in the last days and uh, as followers of Jesus, we are those who have received this wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit. So as we begin this morning, let's give thanks to God together. Let me pray. God, our Father, we are so thankful to you for every good gift that comes from heaven above. And no gift greater than the Holy Spirit himself, the counsellor who's sent by the Father to draw alongside us, to encourage us, to comfort us, to guide us into all truth, to point us always to Jesus. We're so thankful, Lord, for this precious gift, the indwelling Spirit of Jesus, who is always with us and will never leave us. So Holy Spirit, we invite you today to draw near to us, take us deeper into the heart of the Father, and teach us, Lord, how to pray. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
out your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Let me update you with three important pieces of information. First of all, you know that uh, because of COVID-19 restrictions, we've had to delay our AGM and uh, the proposed new date is Sunday the 28th of June. Uh, at this stage, it seems unlikely that we'll be able to proceed with our usual format on that date. But uh, fear not, there are plans in place that will allow us to do what we need to do by email and post uh, that will be fully uh, constitutionally legitimate. So stay tuned for more information about that. That's exciting, isn't it, AGM? Uh, what is exciting is that as of this Tuesday, our Infuse Cafe will be open for business once again. And of course, keeping in line with the government current guidelines, uh, we're well prepared to provide great coffee, great food in a clean, safe and friendly environment. So Kate's prepared some delicious cabinet menu items and uh, we'll be offering takeaway and dine-in options as well. So we hope you'll drop in for coffee and uh, maybe a brekkie burger or uh, plan your next uh, lunch catch-up at Infuse. Hope to see you there. Thirdly, later today, there's what I believe will be a, a landmark event here in Perth called Pray Together WA. And here's how you can be part of that. Hi, I'm Bevan Jones, CEO of 98.5 Sunshine FM. I'm really excited for this Sunday from this studio here at 98.5. We are gonna be the host for a special event, Pray Together WA, 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. on air, and from 4.30 through to 6.30 online through Facebook, uh, our video feeds, websites, and Pray Together WA websites. Pray Together WA, there's gonna be thousands of West Australians around all around our state being led and joining in prayer together and through this studio we're going to have uh, 30 church and community leaders leading us in prayer for our state for the healing for the peace and the prosperity of western australia i'm so excited about it go to 98five.com to find out more and don't forget this sunday 5 p.m tune in there Excellent update from Bevan. Well, you can also go to our website, of course, mounties.org.au, and uh, just follow the links from there. I uh, hope you join us. Uh, let's pray. 
Lord, we thank you that you continue to carry us through this season of uncertain times and that even though church buildings may have closed their doors, that the church itself is very much alive and well, that you continue to build your church through connect groups, through Zoom meetings and phone calls, that the life of your spirit, the same spirit that came on that first day of Pentecost is alive and well in our midst today. We're thankful, Lord. And we pray today for those who are really struggling at this time with health issues, uh, with mental health issues, for those facing family and financial pressures. And we ask that you would help them and we call upon your name as the one who is our ever present help in times of trouble. Hear the cries of our hearts, we pray. And we pray too for this event this evening, pray together WA as pastors and leaders from right across our state come together in prayer and unity in a way that probably would not have happened had it not been for this coronavirus. Use this event, Lord, we pray, to bring about a new day, a new spirit of cooperation and unity across the whole body of Christ here in our state. Make us one, Lord, as Jesus prayed in John 17. Father, we pray for Michael Yu as he brings us the message today on praying in uncertain times. Teach us, we pray, by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi family, thank you for joining us today. Whether you call Mounties home or you were just surfing through the net and you just come across this recording, you are welcome. Special welcome to our young people out there uh, with us. And my prayer is that as we share God's word today, that he will speak to all of us. Well, today is Shavuot, also more commonly known as Pentecost Sunday. Israel celebrated this day with double significance. First, it marked the all-important wheat harvest, as we read in Exodus 34. And secondly, it commemorates the anniversary of the day that God gave the Torah to the nation of Israel in Mount Sinai during their exodus. God commanded Israel to annually celebrate Pentecost, 50 days after the Passover. And it was during this time the followers of Jesus were all together in one place. As Nick have already read, suddenly a sound of blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seems to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. God's promise of the Holy Spirit was fulfilled on that day as the paraclete came and the church was born. But what were the followers of Jesus doing as they gathered in that place? Acts 1 says that they all joined together constantly in prayer. They were praying. Followers of Jesus, the disciples and others, as they waited for the promise to be fulfilled, they gathered and they prayed. Even during the uncertain time when they have just seen their Lord ascend to heaven and they were left by themselves, that they were uncertain about their future, they waited and they prayed. And it is fitting for our series to lead us to this point, praying in uncertain times. Well, families, I'm going to ask and encourage you to pause at this time and to talk to our little ones about prayer, to discuss what prayer is, why we pray, and even share some of the things that you pray for. Discussion questions and activity ideas are available on our website. Our reading for today comes from Psalm 5. But before we read these verses, let me put some context and some thought around them. We know the psalmist is facing difficult times. He doesn't say who his enemy is, but he cries out as an innocent man who has been falsely accused. He seeks justice but he is uncertain of the outcome. 
And in the whole of that psalm, there is no outcome. But the psalmist knows who God is and finds comfort in him. He starts his petition with these words. Listen to my words, O Lord. Consider my lament. Hear my cry for help, my King and my God. For to you I pray. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my requests before you and wait expectantly. We heard last week that there will be storms in our life which may lead us into uncertain times. These uncertain times can eventuate because of natural or moral evil in our world. Whether it is pain and suffering due to loss of a loved one, an illness that has come upon us, or external influence such as wars, terrorism, and culture, natural disasters, we can and will find ourselves in uncertain times. COVID-19 took us by surprise and really has led us into uncertain times. But remember that Jesus is in the boat with us and he is the one who calms the storm and will give us peace in times of uncertainty. I don't know what adversity or storm you are going through at the moment and what you hope for, but I pray that as we delve into the word today, that God will speak to us, that he will give you and me peace, even in the midst of our storms. No matter what times we find ourselves in, whether certain or uncertain, I believe in these three certainties about prayer, more so in uncertain times. The first certainty about prayer in uncertain times is that God hears our prayers, that God hears our prayers, but he listens to our hearts. God hears our prayers, but he listens to our hearts. The psalmist starts his petition with these words, listen to my words, Lord. Listen to my words. Consider my lament. Our God is an approachable and a relational God. We have a God who hears us during our storms. Our God not only hears our prayers, but he actually listens to the heart behind the prayer. He considers our lament. Our God does not say what you are going through is just karma, that it came about because what you have done. Our God does not say, disconnect your feelings, your emotions, your pain, so that you will have peace. Our God does not say sorry, but that is the way it is. It is just as it is. Our God does not and did not leave us to fend for ourselves, but he came and dwelt with us. He is God. He is Emmanuel, God with us. In our uncertain times, he is there with us. He feels the pain with us. He cries with us. He walks with us through the darkest of valleys that we may found ourselves in. He is there with us. And when humanity was living in darkness, the light came into that darkness. And it is through that light, Jesus, that we may come before our Father God in our storms and cry out to him. And as we cry out to him, he hears our cries. But at the same time, he listens to our hearts. Hebrews 4 records, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. We do not have a high priest who is unable to feel sympathy for our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. 
Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Jesus has opened the door to the throne room of God so that whenever we kneel and come before our Father and pray in confidence, we will receive mercy and find grace in our time of need. Wherever you find yourself today, come before the open arms of our Father and pray, cry out, cry out to him, pour your heart out to him, for he hears our cries and listens to our hearts. Second certainty about prayer in uncertain time is that God answers our prayers by responding to our hearts. God answers our prayers by responding to our hearts. What is in your heart when you pray? Let me rephrase that. What is it that has motivated you and me to pray? What is the true reason that has brought us to prayer? We can pray for many things, but is it the right thing to pray for? I believe that it's not what we say, but what we have in our hearts that our Father addresses first and foremost. And yes, at times this may lead us to believe that God does not answer our prayers. But he is working in us all the time as he addresses our hearts. The psalmist pray, prays, Hear my cry, cry for help, my King and my God, for to you I pray. Here the psalmist acknowledges the sovereignty and the authority of the one who he is praying to. We need to remind ourselves as we come to prayer that God's thoughts are not our thoughts, neither are our ways his ways. As heavens are higher than the earth, so are God's ways higher than our ways and God's thoughts higher than our thoughts. The psalmist knows this, and he also knows that our all-knowing, all-powerful, ever present, but most importantly, all loving Father addresses our hearts. God knows what is good for all of us, and God answers our prayers by responding to our hearts. So that over time, our hearts are transformed and begin to sing the same tune that God's heart is singing for us. I wonder if you've ever read the blessing of an unanswered prayer. It reads like this. I asked for strength that I might achieve. I was made weak that I might learn humbly to obey. I asked for health that I might do greater things. I was given infirmity that I might do better things. I asked for riches that I might be happy. I was given poverty that I might be wise. I asked for power that I might have the praise of men. I was given weakness that I might feel the need of God. I asked for all things that I might enjoy life. I was given life that I might enjoy all things. I got nothing that I asked for, but everything that I hoped for. Almost despite myself, my unspoken prayers were answered. I am among all men most richly blessed. Our loving Father answers our prayers by responding to the desperate need of our hearts, which we ourselves at times might not know. But he works in us and transforms our hearts to be in tune with his. The way God touches our hearts is the best answer to our prayers. 
and the last certainty about prayer in uncertain times is that God, God's response to our prayers bring peace to our hearts. God's response to our prayers brings peace to our hearts. As we come before God in prayer, he listens to our hearts, he responds to our hearts, and in turn, he brings peace into our hearts. The psalmist says, In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait expectantly. We may understand the morning in a literal way, but it also has the meaning of a new day, the rising of the sun with the rebirth of hope. And according to Habakkuk, waiting in hope for God's deliverance is integral to having faith. Habakkuk says, I will keep watch to see what he will say to me. Wait for it. It will surely come. And the righteous live by faith. Why does God bring peace in our hearts during our storm? We may answer because we ask for it. True. But I believe there is something more to it than that. Why do we receive peace in the midst of our storms? So that the world may know Jesus and to glorify him. Is the peace in our hearts only for us? Are we not blessed to be a blessing to those around us? How much more during uncertain times do we need to be that light in the world? Matthew 5 says, In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. In the midst of our storms, God brings peace to our hearts, which transcends all understanding, which will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And as the world looks on, they will see the living hope in us as God's peace dwells in our hearts during these uncertain times. Family, are we living that calling? to have peace, to have hope, to have confidence in uncertain times, or are we like the rest of the world? The peace we receive from God is not only for us, but also for the rest of the world. For God will not let our faith in him during the storm be for nothing, but he will bring good to those around us through the storm as he dwells his peace in us. As a blessed people, let's be a blessing to those around us. Let me summarize and close this message with a time of reflection. I pray that we will take away from this sermon that we have a God who is open to us waiting for us to come to him. No matter where we are at or where we have been, he's, wait, he's waiting for us. He wants us to come to him and commune with him. And as we pray, God listens to our heart. God responds to our heart and he brings peace to our heart. Why would God listen? Why would he respond and bring peace to our hearts as we engage with him in prayer? It's because you are valuable to God. So much so that the Son of God died for you. That in the storms of life, in uncertain times, as we come to God in prayer, he leans in. He hears us and he answers us. And as we engage with him in prayer, he prepares us for eternity with him. 
That is why he hears our heart. He responds to our heart and he brings peace to our heart as he prepares us for all eternity. I sometimes think about the cross and shut my eyes and try to see the cruel nails, the crown of thorns, and Jesus crucified for me. But even could I see him die, I would but see a little part of that great love which, like a fire, is always burning in his heart. You are valuable to God. You are unique and a composite fashioned in the image of God for a particular purpose. What it means to be human is to be created in the image of God. What it means to find your destiny is to find your creator who has created you and why he has made you for a purpose. So in general terms, the Imago Dei, in particular terms, it's not who you are alone that defines you, but whose you are. That is my prayer. To me, the person of Jesus Christ provides that coherent answer in the incarnation. He identifies my malady, provides for my malady, draws me into that relationship, takes me through the process of suffering, shows me the purity of Jesus himself in the way he taught and lived. And ultimately in rising again from the dead, he teaches me that time is merely a temporal thing. We are here for eternity and he alone is able to take us through the cross, past the open tomb, into the very presence of God. I has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. There is no other worldview that will give you corresponding and coherent answers to the four questions of life with logic, consistency, empirical adequacy, and experiential relevance. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto yeah. the Father He describes your heart. He provides for your malady. He equips you in suffering. He puts meaning into every moment in history. And he conquers death through the resurrection from the grave. Surrender to him. Love him. Follow him. Serve him. Live for him. And take his message wherever you go. What is our malady, our fears, or our enemies? What storm is there in our life? Let's take a moment to pray to our Father before Derek leads us into a time of reflection. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the privilege that we can come before you in prayer and to cry out to you to pour out our heart to you. And you lovingly answer our prayers by responding to our hearts. Father, wherever we are at in our lives and what storm may have presented itself before us, we come to you knowing that you love us, that you value us, and that you will respond to us to bring good to all. We may not understand why, we might not understand how, or we might not understand when, but we know that you are always there for us and you are preparing us for eternity. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen.
What a wonderful blessing Derek Wood is to our church family. Well, a great message from Michael, and uh, we hope you'll join us next week when Graham Mabry will bring us a message on thanking in uncertain times. On that first Pentecost Sunday in Acts 2, people from all different nations heard their own language being spoken. So what a blessing this morning as we conclude our time together to hear Amazing Grace sung in 50 different languages. God bless you. So much has changed in our world lately. Wo auch immer du bist, ruf seinen Namen an. Jesus. 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 Jesus.